Riding through winter sucks, doesn't it? It's cold. It always seems to be dark. Windy. And wet. But stick with it. Because the fitness gains you can make through winter will carry you through to spring. Because winter miles means summer smiles. So here are my tips for riding through winter. Let's get into it. So we'll start with the bike. The biggest change I actually make um, is actually just to use, use my older bike. This is a specialized alloy. Um, it's an alloy, alloy frame. It's about 10 years old, still does the job. Um, certainly for commuting, this is fine. So yeah, first tip, if you've got an old bike, keep it maintained and ride that one. So I don't really ride much in the rain in Australia. In fact, I try and avoid it at all costs. But in the UK, if you took that attitude, you'd never really get out. So we used to use these SKS uh, race blades. They're kind of like, well, they are clip-on clip -on mud guards. So they go on the, you get one for the fork and one for the, the seat stays. It's kind of, like, it's a rubber, rubber mounting. So although it, it doesn't scratch the bike, it does kind of scuff the paintwork a bit. So again, it's one for the, the winter, winter hat bike. Not your latest beautiful bike that you're gonna be upset if it gets a bit scratched. But they do a good job. If you're riding like a chain gang through winter, uh, through rainy roads, you get this um, wet grit shower in your face from the, the wheel in front and people can get really mad at you if you don't have some of these, quite understandably. Something that's really important um, to me and, and, and to everyone who wants to stay safe is being visible. Obviously it's winter, uh, dark a lot of the time, poor visibility. You've got drivers who are, if they're not texting, they're trying to clear the mist from their, their windscreen. So you've got to do everything you can to be as visible as possible and that means lights and reflective reflectivity. Um, so on this bike, I've just got a snap-on uh, reflective band, but the main thing really is, that is your clothing and, and, and your lights. So in, in, in the dark, I'll be using the Power Road. On the back, we got the uh, R70, another Nog, and to complete the Trio, the, the Daylight Light, which is a Mini Niner. I basically use this all the time. Through, even if it's the middle of the day on a sunny day, I just have this going on a blinking blinking pattern just to increase the chance of being seen. Onto the posh bike, something else I'm a big fan of is tyres with reflective sidewalls. These are the um, Continental GP4000s Mark II. Again, it really it just gives you that extra bit of visibility um, from the side. They kind of, it actually really works. It kind of lights up like two, two hoops. Onto the clothing, um, so we'll go top to bottom, starting with a headband. I suffer most in the extremities, so ears, fingers, toes are the things that really get, get to me once the temperature drops. Super simple bit of fabric, uh, this is a Kalenji, which is a um, decathlon, decathlon own brand. It's really basic, it's kind of just like a stretchy lycra with with a really thin, thin fleece on the inside. I know that other brands will have like windproof sections and different materials in different areas. To me, this is fine. It makes a massive difference, even just this thin little bit of material. Next, we've got the, the neck. I don't really bother with this. Luckily in Melbourne, it doesn't get so cold. But yeah, in the UK, if it's certainly below, below zero, um, a buff, buff or similar, just gets the wind off your neck. If it's really, really bloody cold, you can pull it over your, your nose um, and, and, and your mouth. So yeah, again, it doesn't weigh anything. It's just kind of thin, thin material. Jackets, I really hate these. It's, whilst yes, it is waterproof and it's super high vis, they're really boiling the bag, these waterproof jackets. And if you're on a hard ride, a training ride, what you save from being dry from the outside, you're just gonna create your own internal internal water through sweating. So I've ridden in this and had water basically coming out through the coming out through the sleeves and have been damp inside. So what's the point of being waterproof if you're then gonna get wet anyway? So this for me is now my um, dog walking jacket. It's a DHB um, wiggle product. Like I say, super high vis. Yes, it's waterproof. No, it's not really suitable for riding hard. Probably if you're on a commute, a short commute maybe, and you really don't want to get your clothes wet and you're gonna poodle, it'll do a job. I much prefer 
I much prefer to use a decent jersey. This is a specialised winter jersey. It's got kind of fleecy sections, it's got, it's got windproof sections, um, stretchy panels. So this jacket did me well in the UK through all temperatures, just layer some base layer underneath it if you need to get it a bit warmer. Next up is gloves. If you're not too cold, so kind of 10 degrees, whatever, these do really well. This is a silk glove liner. You get them from ski and snowboard shops. Just put this underneath your normal short uh, finger gloves and that'll do you fine. Below below 10, they run out of run out of warmth and you need a proper proper riding glove. I'm a big fan of these. This is the um, Duo Blaze 2018, so the latest model. High vis, reflective sections and really warm. This does me down. Anything in, in Melbourne wise, if you if you're riding below that, just pair it with with the silk liner. So bib shorts. Here's where you've got options. Um, if it isn't too cold, you can wear your normal bib shorts with some knee warmers. These are pearl izumi. They've got reflective reflective parts. Lovely and toasty on the knees, down to like the mid calf, but doesn't help you with um, freezing what's below your jacket and above the the knee warmers, which is your junk. Uh, so this year I invested in some some winter bibs, thermal bibs, so they've got like fleecy fleecy on the inner. These are DHB, they've got the flashlight, flashlight technology down from the commuter range, so you've got bits of reflective on the sides and the back. Solves the issue of frozen junk very nicely, but you are a bit restricted on the fit. Um, I like my leg warmers to come down to kind of mid mid calf level, and when they're that low on here, the pad is, is basically sagging down low. I have a sneaking suspicion that is what a nappy feels like. Obviously, I don't know that for sure. What you gain in warmth, you lose in fit. Really just for the coldest coldest rides, as soon as possible, uh, as soon as it's warm enough, I shift onto the standard bibs with the knee warmers. For socks, plenty of brands out there are doing decent cycling socks. Merino, um, something nice and thick, um, quite high up as well, so you wanna kind of get that gap between the knee warmers and the socks as small as possible. Onto the shoes, um, on the commuter I actually use mountain bike SPDs. Um, so I have these specialised winter boots, SH101s, waterproof, pretty warm, waterproof apart from the big hole that your leg goes in. Uh, so yeah, I used these mountain biking in the UK for many years and they did, did me well. On the road bike, so if it's not too cold, got these windproof covers, bellwether. They're fine, they keep your, keep your shoes clean, but they're not massively warm, to be honest. And pretty quickly, <clears throat> when it gets cold, you need to be going for something warmer, something that covers the whole shoe. For those, I've got full, full cover booties, uh, lots of reflective parts on the back. Again, waterproof, neoprene, waterproof apart from the hole that your foot goes in. Much, much warmer than a, a, a windproof. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I moved to these pretty quickly, to be honest, and they do me good. So putting it all together on the winter commute. Not raining right now, but it was throwing it down earlier, earlier this morning. So yeah, I didn't fancy getting the, uh, the the posh bike grimy. Not cold enough for the uh, ear warmers, but I've got the, the winter jacket on, high vis gloves, the DHB winter long, long, long mix. I don't have the speed bump. What else we got on? Oh yeah. So the thick, thick winter cycling socks and those are uh, specialized boots. So that's it, that's the end of the video. I hope you got something out of it and found it enjoyable. Um, this is the last video I'm doing before I get a new microphone. Um, so you should hopefully, fingers crossed, see a jump in audio quality next time. So yeah, enjoy your winter riding. I'll see you on the road. Bye bye.